So, so what you see here is so we have the uh, pilot, which is uh, Ian, and then uh, this is essentially the AI. And then we'll set them up so that we have two situa uh, situations where the uh, human and the AI are going to converge at an airport. And then uh, the, um, so you'll see what the AI is doing here. Yes, you're here, and then a view of the uh, system here. And then, uh, so we can restart the whole setup. Okay. And then uh, Ian basically has a headset on where you can talk into for the for the voice recognition. Uh, reset so you can see here the human yeah converging and then this is what uh, the algorithm is thinking what the uh, human is going to be doing and the decisions the AI is exploring and is trying to find the find the best one. Uh, Ian, do you want to do an announcement? Butler traffic sky hot side three three miles to the south landing runway eight Okay, so he said he's gonna run on runway eight. And so once the system has uh, understood this, then um, now it is inferring what uh, what uh, Ian might be doing, which is run on uh, runway eight. Um, and then uh, the AI is going to uh, make its uh, traffic call at some point once it gets close enough. See, pretty soon. So, so this is an uh, just to clarify. So this is an uncontrolled airport. So the way it works is pilots basically just announce where they are and what they want to do, right? So there's no tower or ATC. It's basically you know you. It's like a you know. Like in the, in traffic hour. Skyhawk 7373 miles south, 2,700 feet inbound runway to 6 low approach Butler. Right, so the AI said, okay, I'm going to come in to runway 26 to a low approach. Then Ian's going to do another call. Butler traffic Skyhawk 573, 2 miles to the south, landing runway 26 Butler. <laughs> So once it is past it, it should switch to the other runway. So you'll see the light line kind of change around. There you go. So now this is a more of a standard traffic pattern, and then both of them are landing at uh, at two six. And so here the AI is kind of cutting in in front of him because it thinks he's uh, uh, he's uh, he's going to be faster than uh, than the human pilot. And uh, you know this is fine as long as the safety is right. And so the behavior is learned based on uh, a lot of data that we collected at airports to figure out you know, how, are people, uh, how are people actually flying at this airport. And what we want to achieve is that the AI flies the same way that humans fly. So the idea is that you, know, you want to have this seamless operation, right? Instead of having like a, a UAV come in and it completely ignores and it's like, okay, I'm going to take my right and not care about anybody. How can we uh, fly uh, in a, in a, in a uh, good way? What type of sensors are they using to communicate with each other? So, so both aircraft essentially in a real system would have radios. And then uh, they also both have, in this sense, in this case, ADSB, uh, so they can see each other. But from a legal requirement, they would have to have this visual detect and avoid system in a sense to know, okay, I see this aircraft in front of me, I can separate from them. So uh, in this case, uh, AI, uh, does it do the visual landing or how does it work? Uh, so in this case, we're only doing a low approach, <laughs> but uh, so so there's no uh, land. So there's uh, the landing was not a big focus on on this, right? So it just comes in to final approach, but doesn't do the actual landing. So it does a pass landing. So the so the AI is essentially exploring various uh, uh, options. Okay, what would a human do? What could the AI do? And they're basically playing this game with each other and trying to figure out what is the best best choice that is safe right and then the other thing is uh, that we're not really showing here is but there's a, a formal guarantee that they will never collide with each other that we're also developing 
Has this been tested in like really busy sort of uh, multiple airlines coming in around the same time? So that's, so that's something that we are that we are working on. Yes, and uh, we have the data. So this particular airport is pretty busy. There's like sometimes up to six aircraft. So we have data from lots of encounters of various aircraft, um, but it's it's not something you have like tested in a real setup. Is that data data you have to capture yourself, or is that something that's readily available from airports? Uh, so it's something we capture. So it's not available at the resolution. We need it online. Like they have, you know, I don't know, flight tracker websites, but they they don't capture the frequency and low altitude that we need. Oh, so you actually have to go out and capture that yourself. Yes. So we have two setups: one at uh, Butler County Airport, one at Allegheny County Airport, where we're capturing uh, ADSB. Uh, radio traffic and also camera data and we have published a data set paper called Trajea that actually has all of these behaviors so you can learn social navigation in airports. Is the industry moving towards capturing this uh, like high resolution data um, with man-operated planes or? Well I mean I think this morning we heard a lot of talk about uh, you know, okay, we'll put everybody in their lane and don't, uh, you know, <laughs> avoid each other. <laughs> I think mean, this is a little bit of, you know, the counterpoint when for VFR flying, we say, okay, you know, how would this integrate with how our operations done today? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, uh, so they're not necessarily, uh, uh, I think people have not discovered the problem yet. Yeah. <laughs> So for now, just one on one, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We are still, uh, the next step is multiple humans, single AI. Yeah. So multiple humans, one AI, and then we'll do AI. Multiple AI, AI. Yeah. I mean, as you can see, this is increasing the scale for a significant hardware. <laughs> But yeah, the idea is to do human trials to make sure that this actually can be validated. Uh, that you know, this actually makes sense. Of the human, on it, at the end of the day, it's about how comfortable the human is operating with the AI in the same way. So, so how do you quantify that? I mean, essentially what we are after is, I think, the equivalent of a, of a touring test for pilots, right? Like, you know, can a pilot not distinguish that he's not flying with an AI, but instead of flying with, a, with another uh, uh, pilot? Uh, so, does anybody want to try it? Yeah. You can fly do you want to research here? So to implement this, since we're not capturing that data live right now, um, does this mean that pilots need to change the hardware in their planes to capture that no, like, high no, frequency? No, 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 uh, no, in a plane it's easy. Uh, in a plane you do get it at frequency, just online websites uh, is like, you know, they capture it from everywhere, right? So they just get it at, I don't know, uh, once every five seconds or something like yeah. this, right? And we want it at every second, like whatever. So, yeah. so in an aircraft, you get it at full rate. Got it, yeah. So there, the data is all there. It's just yes. a matter of it's not being recorded. Right, fully. right. And that you're aggregated into some yeah. website, right? So you have to actually... So, so what is in that? Actually, what's in the box there is like an ADS-B receiver. You know, they're a bit this big, and you know, you just stick them in there. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> And then uh, right now it's running uh, inference on uh, one camera here, um, and so inference is at 20 frames per second. There's some uh, lack of optimization that kind of pushes this down to six frames per second. And you're going to see the um, we're playing a video here, and then it's we're running at uh, each, each image is five megapixels uh, essentially. Uh, and then our end goal is to go get. Uh, to essentially 60 frames per second, so 10, 10 for each, uh, 10 for each camera. Yeah, and it's all black and white. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so that gives you a, essentially doubles your resolution. Yeah. Uh, so the cameras are actually colored cameras right now, but uh, uh, yeah, the right way is to. Yeah, the right.
why so why six cameras instead of a, a fewer number of cameras that are um, maybe higher resolution or higher frame rate? Uh, those are the highest resolution global shutter cameras that we could get. <laughs> so uh, I mean, you'd need uh, so that you know, so it's, you'd need a thirty megapixel camera if you want one. So that's pretty. And, and, you need kind of, and you want you know, 220 degrees by 40 degrees, right? So, yeah. Uh, that's a, so, right, so current field is 220 by 40. Yeah. You need very wide field of view, but not very vertical right. field of view. And it's, yeah, you need to see it essentially far enough back because there's some ability to catch you from behind, basically. Yeah. And how important is a uh, frame rate in all of this as opposed to uh, uh, resolution? Well, you want to, so, so there's, uh, you want to be able to track, so, so the most important metric you have to calculate is angular rate. And so to do that well, you need to track over time. Yeah. And why is angular rate so important? So if your angular rate is zero, you're basically going to collision close. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, as in something is coming directly at you. So if it's not moving in your field of view, yeah. then uh, you're going to collision close. Right? And so the more accurately you can decide the, uh, if something is not moving relative to you, the better you are to decide. Yeah. So for that, resolution is key. Right, resolution. Yeah, good question. Yeah, so then you want to be able to track across time, right? If, yeah. if your frame rate is too low, you can't really filter that very well, or you might lose association. That's good. Mm. So we do a lot of self-create. Uh, so we just put AI against AI. That's how it works. And do other objects like birds or other yes. things in the air? Actually, we pick up birds. We detect birds and drones, even though they're not as good as they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, there's a different video. Yeah. So it picks up birds and drones. Hmm. What does it classify them as? I mean, also as airplanes. As airplanes? But it's interesting that, you know, airplanes, the birds are very random. Yeah. yeah. How many test cases have you guys ran this through so far? So the training is done on the, it's called the Amazon Airborne Detection Registration. Oh, yeah. So that's how we do it. And then we have a whole new implementation of that. So we have like time zips. Yeah. Is the hardware platform something that you guys develop yourselves or? Uh, yes. So I mean, you know, the cameras may be all off the shelf because they're going to be able to get those options. Oh, yeah. 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 Is that a is that a heat sink on top? Covered? Okay. Yeah. So the AGX with no heat sink. Oh, okay. That's just a depth. 